We can think of metabolism as being the sum of all of the chemical reactions in a body, whether they're breaking things down to release energy or using energy to build things up. There are two main types of metabolic reactions. Anabolic reactions are reactions that start with simpler, smaller products and combine them into larger, more complex molecules. This would be doing things like combining individual sugar molecules into a complex carbohydrate or combining individual amino acids to make a protein. These reactions, anabolic reactions where we're building something, take energy. It requires energy to take smaller things and build them up into something larger. Imagine trying to build a building out of bricks. It takes energy to take a pile of small things and put them together into an organized, larger, more complex structure. Catabolic reactions, on the other hand, are reactions that start with more complicated molecules and break them down into smaller, simpler products. This process releases the energy that's stored in the bonds of the complex molecule. This energy that's released by the catabolic reactions is used to power the anabolic reactions. And this is happening in our cells all the time. We take in a complex molecule, break it apart into smaller subunits that releases energy. We use that energy to combine other small molecules together the way we need to to build the complex molecules that we need to run our bodies. So these two types of reactions are really linked. We have to break things down to create the raw materials and to release the energy that we need to build back up into the molecules that our bodies are going to use to function. One specific type of anabolic reaction is a dehydration reaction. Many of the complex molecules in our bodies are created by dehydration synthesis. This is where we join two smaller molecules together by removing a molecule of water. So if we take a look at the figure that's shown, we have two sugar molecules. Each of these sugar molecules has an OH group on it. Now if I want to make water, I need to have an oxygen and two hydrogens. I can take an oxygen and a hydrogen from one sugar molecule and take a hydrogen from the other sugar molecule and join them together to make water. That's going to leave some unstable atoms behind in my two sugar molecules and to fix that they get joined together into a single larger molecule. Joining molecules together to form something more complex by dehydration. So this is an example of one type of anabolic reaction. Because this is an anabolic reaction, it's going to require energy. So when we're building more complicated things by stringing sugar molecules together, that's going to require energy. We can take lots of separate molecules and string them together into huge long strands of glucose molecules by this process of dehydration synthesis. The opposite of dehydration is a process called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is an example of a catabolic process where we're going to break something down by adding water. Even if we look at the name hydro for water and lysis means to break, we're going to use water to break molecules apart. In this case, we start with a more complicated molecule and we insert a water molecule where one of the bonds is to break it apart into two smaller molecules. Hydrolysis, or an example of a catabolic reaction, this is going to release energy that can then be used to do other things. The reactions in our body can occur naturally, but a lot of them would take a really long time to occur. And this is because of what's called the activation energy of a reaction. In the cases of the reactions happening in our bodies, they want to go from being the reactants to being the products. The problem is it takes energy for them to be able to do this. It takes energy that has to be added to the reaction in order to break things apart so that we can go to the product stage. This is called the activation energy of a reaction. And that's why if I were to hold a pencil in my hand, it's relatively stable. This pencil isn't going to change or do anything right now because in order to change or do something, I would have to add some energy to this. There's an activation energy that would have to be overcome before this pencil is going to change. Now, if I could hold this pencil here for a hundred years, this pencil would eventually change. It would rot away in my hands, but it would take a really long time. 
reactions work that way too. They'll happen on their own, but because of the energy you have to add for the activation energy, it takes a really long time. In order to speed reactions up in our body, we use enzymes. Enzymes lower the activation energy of a reaction. They make it easier for the reaction to happen. So if I were to just hold this pencil like this and wait for it to break, eventually it will, but I'm gonna wait a really long time. Adding an enzyme would be like sitting here and bending the pencil a little bit. I'm gonna put some pressure on it and in much less time, the pencil's going to break. Enzymes act the same way. Enzymes put a little bit of stress on the bonds to make them easier to break so that reactions can happen faster. So instead of having to wait for a starch molecule in your stomach to sit around for five years before it starts breaking apart, we have enzymes that make it much easier for that to happen so that we can break apart the starch into individual sugars really quickly. Enzymes are helpful to speed up reactions in several different ways. Like I demonstrated already, they put a little stress on bonds to make them easier to break. That's one thing. Another thing that enzymes do is they hold the reactants near each other, which makes it a lot easier for them to react. And then third thing that enzymes can do is some enzymes can help couple anabolic reactions and catabolic reactions. So for a reaction that's gonna take a lot of energy, the enzyme can help take the energy from a catabolic reaction in order to process the anabolic reaction. So enzymes are really great to have, and we're gonna talk more about enzymes when we get to the protein section.